list is a simple card making stamp set. But what if things weren't quite what they seem? What if these supplies could be more? So much more. That's my challenge for today. To take this stamp, die and stencil from card making supplies to a scrapbook layout. If you're investing in these sets, you really do want to get more out of them. Girl Math tells us if we use them over and over, they're practically free. So today I want to show you how to do just that. I'll start by making a card and then share how you can stretch these supplies onto a scrapbook layout. Let's get started. Here's a quick look at the stamp die and stencil set that I'm using today. And I am going to start by doing a little bit of prep work. I've also pulled out my Pink Fresh Studio stencil brushes and I'll be using their inks as well. I'll be sure to link all of the supplies in the description box below. So there are a couple of ways that you can go about doing this. I am actually going to be stenciling the image first. It's a bit of a chicken and egg situation. You can stamp the image first and then stencil over the top, or you can stencil first and then stamp your image over the top. And that's the way I'm gonna go about it today. I'll be working with supplies from the Flower Market collection. So I am gonna go with inks that will coordinate with that. And I've really just stuck with a tone on tone combination. So three colors for the flowers and then three colors for the leaves. This is actually the very first time that I've used a layered stencil like this one. So I really wanted to keep things simple. The other thing is I am going to actually replicate this four times and I want to remember what I've done. The stencil layers themselves are marked so that makes that part super easy. And then I've used my Misty for positioning. I didn't really want to mess with the trying to line up the stencil again, because I haven't done this before. So I'm actually using the corner of my Misty as a guide. Every time I place the stencil, I'm making sure that it's hard up against that bottom right hand corner. That way, as I complete the layers, they'll all be aligned evenly. For my color tones, I'm working light to dark because it's very hard to add a light color over the top of a darker one. So you do have to start with the, the lighter tones in your layers and then move towards darker ones. I'm also using separate brushes for each of the color families and that's so that my ink colors don't get muddy. And off camera, as I'm finished with each stencil layer, I'm just placing them in order on my desk. I am actually going to recreate this design four times in total and I just want to build up a little bit of a system here. I actually found this process super therapeutic and relaxing and fun. It's the kind of thing that I would do if I didn't want to commit to a project. It would be perfect to pop on a movie, pop out your stencils and just create these images. There's not a lot of thinking that's required. How pretty does that look? And we haven't even added the stamped image yet. So I'm going to do that next. And this is probably the hardest part of the process because I don't have any guides. I am just going to have to place the stamp over the top of the image and align it as best I can. Now I am a sucker for an embossed stamped image. So I'm gonna use Memento in Tuxedo Black and then a clear embossing powder over the top. This is where the Misty comes in super handy as well because I'm actually going to stamp the image twice. I wanna get a really clear stamped image before I start embossing anything. The other great thing is that now that I've set this up once, I'll be able to start my production line and I won't have to realign the stamp at all. Everything is now in the perfect position. I don't know about you, but I find this part of the process so mesmerizing. I love watching those little crystals of embossing powder 
change shape and melt away to reveal the embossed stamp image. It's just, it's so, so pretty. The embossing really does take this to the next level. It took me way longer than it should have to try and align this die, but I got there in the end, professional paper crafter that I am, and I am going to run this through my Sizzix machine. I do have a metallic plate, but I wanted to be sure this didn't go anywhere because it does actually take a little bit of time to add all of those colors, and the pressure is on to get all of the alignment just right. This is the finished product and I love it. I am going to go ahead off camera and create a bunch more of those. The other prep that I need to do is some backgrounds and I am going to use this background die for that. I will need several of these as well. I'll create one that is the full plate that we'll use as the card base, but I wanna use up these paper scraps. So I'm going to do two or three just using those as options to pop into the scrapbook layout as paper layers. That is all the prep done. So it's time to make some pretty things. Uh, starting with a card. I have created a card base just using cardstock from my stash. And then I'm going to layer in that die cut piece. This is like a background die. It's got a lot of texture on it. It's really beautiful. And then I've got a strip of velvet ribbon that I'm going to layer along that left hand edge there. To keep the ribbon ends really neat and tidy, I'm actually going to wrap them around to the back of that piece of card so they'll be hidden. This ribbon is actually quite thick. So when I do that, it does create a bit of height on this piece of card and I wanna make sure it's nice and level. So I've added in a piece of 3D foam along Along that middle section that way when I place it on top of my card that entire piece is very level even though it's quite raised up I hope that makes sense um, I do like a layered card I like there to be dimension within my card but every layer does need to be level you don't want this like lumpy bumpy warped um, finish Here's my sentiment and I do want a bit of dimension for that too. So all I've done is actually stamped and die cut it out once and then used the die to cut out several more layers of that same cardstock. And I'm just going to stack them on top of each other and then glue that whole piece onto the card base. I can go ahead now and lock in the position of the floral piece. I love how the leaves there nestle into the sentiment. This is the thing with using the same brand of things on your projects. It's not a coincidence that that floral cluster is the perfect size for the card base and that that sentiment is the right size and nestles in beautifully to the florals. It's because they're all designed to work together and it actually makes your job of creating creating cards so much easier. I have added one more layer with a paper floral and that's the card done. It is now time to stretch these supplies onto a scrapbook layout. I'm going to be working with a square photo that's black and white today and I am going to pull out a couple more paper scraps. The blue one there was actually cut to size. It was already that size from my pack of goodies and then I'm going to layer in the uh, die cut pieces that we created earlier as well as a, another black and white floral. Now don't worry about the gap there between those two white paper scraps because I'm going to cover that up with my photo and then one of the floral elements. I'm going to build out the design for the layout based on a visual triangle. So I know that I am going to need three embellishment clusters. And as it so happens, I have three of these floral pieces. I did realize after the fact that I probably could have cut one of these in half and stretched it a little bit further, but I had them all sitting there. I knew that I wanted to use three on the layout and one on the card. So caution to the wind, here we are. <laughs> So I do love dimension on my scrapbook layouts. So I am gonna add in some 3D foam just in between my paper layers there. And I am gonna work with a couple of the puffy stickers as well. 
This sticker says, stop and smell the roses. And I love how it sort of is a nod to the roses in my embellishment clusters. I feel like it really helps to pull the page together. And it is the perfect shade for those roses. It's a really pretty peachy apricot color. This is a very recent photo of my daughter and I. We were absolutely blessed to be able to go to the Taylor Swift concert in Melbourne. And this is a very quick selfie that we took right outside the venue. As you can see, we're both super excited to be there. I have a bunch of photos from this weekend that I cannot wait to scrapbook. So I'm not sure if you've noticed, but this whole top section, the photo and the embellishments, they are not attached to the background yet. And there's a reason for that. Actually, there's a couple of reasons. Uh, the first one is that I want to be able to control where this piece is positioned on the background. And I can't place it until I know how big it's going to be. At this stage, I don't know how far out to the left or right it's going to go. And I want to have that all locked in before I decide the position of this entire piece on the background of the layout. I have used those die cut florals as my embellishment bases, but I do want to add in some extra die cuts and create those layers that I was talking about earlier. This collection has a bunch of floral pieces in it, so they were really lovely to add to those clusters. There is quite a lot of auditioning that happens at this point in the process. That pack of florals, I think, has like, I don't know, 40 different pieces in it. So I do need to do a sweep through that and just eliminate some choices. So I always do that first and then I can focus on the maybe 10 or so pieces that could work. And then those are the ones that get auditioned on the layout. I have talked quite a lot about that in previous scrapbooking tutorial videos. So if you're new, be sure to check those out. Now we need to talk about the second reason I'm building the page this way and not sort of more traditionally from bottom to top. And that's because I'm going to be brave today and I'm going to add some mixed media onto my background. If I'd glued this piece down earlier, I'd have a couple of problems. Firstly, I wouldn't have access to the background itself. And secondly, I wouldn't know where to put that mixed media. I actually like my mixed media to be quite subtle and I like it to feel like it's really part of the layers of the page. And I haven't figured out a way to do that until I've built the layout. So I do work backwards in that way in that I build the layout out almost to completion and then I add my mixed media. See, even at this point here, I'm extending the cluster out to the left there. So I need to make sure that all of those decisions are 100% complete before I start adding any paint or ink to the page. It's at this point that I'm also looking at balancing out the colors of the page. And that's the thing too. How can I choose the color of the mixed media until I've finished adding all of the color within the elements. I'm always in such awe of the girls who do their mixed media first before they've even started like constructing the page. They create their background first and it blows my mind because my head just doesn't work that way. It's time to get brave and I am going to start adding in my ink. I'm using a blending brush and I'm going very, very lightly. What I want to do first is map out exactly where the ink is going to go and see how I'm using the project itself, my, my actual photo, that layer, as the template, as the guide, so that the ink is actually perfectly positioned behind the element that I'm adding to the page. So I always start with a very soft layer of ink first because you can obviously add more color, but it's very hard to take color away. And then I use the element there as a template, as a guide, I place it, I add ink, I take it away, I add some more ink and then I just keep doing that until I'm happy. And I'm also going to add for this background some stitching. So I'm just going to mark those lines in pencil very, very faintly and then stitch over the top. 
and then I can add in some more ink. I can add this piece back onto the layout and that will be the page done. Well, that's what I thought. Once I had positioned this piece onto the layout, I was pretty happy with the page and I actually did think that it was done. But sometimes I will finish a layout, go to bed, come back the next day and see it with a bit of a fresh perspective. And I did think that this layout needed a couple of more things added. You can see here in the close up images that I've added in some enamel dots to the clusters. And I've also added in the title that says, yay. That is actually not even from this collection, but it is a Pink Fresh Studio one and it matches beautifully. Another supply that we all have that we really do need to get more out of are our punches. It's so easy for them to get popped into a drawer and forgotten about. Let's fix that. Be sure to watch this video next to be re-inspired by your stash. I'll see you all again very soon. Until then, bye.